Thanks for joining us. Before we look at the subject of are there certain ways only that God can be worshiped, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us understand what we're going to read from His holy book. Father in heaven, we thank you for the Bible and we thank you for the light of truth that it sheds upon our minds so that we can understand the difference between truth and error and what types of worship are appropriate to you in your sight. And we pray that you will help us now as we read to understand what you're trying to teach us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's free book is entitled Lost in Church. Is it possible for someone to attend church faithfully, teach the lessons, sing in the choir, help the poor? visit the sick and still be lost? Find out what God has to say. We would like to send you a free copy of this book, Lost in Church. To receive this free gift, simply call 1-800-THE-TRUTH. That's 1-800-843-8788 and ask for LS13. And now, Pastor John Grossball. We studied in a previous program about a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius who had a vision from God about three o'clock in the afternoon, an angel appeared to him and said to him, you send to Joppa to a man called Simon Peter and he will come and teach you what you need to know to be saved. And so we read in this previous program how that when the messengers from Caesarea, from Cornelius' place, were on the way to Joppa as they drew near, God gave Peter a vision. Now we, here's what the vision was. It's in Acts, the 10th chapter. It says, Peter became very hungry. He wanted to eat, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. And then Peter woke up and he thought to himself, What is this all about? It says in the next verse, he was wondering, what did this mean? And while he was wondering what the Lord was trying to teach him, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, there's people coming to meet you and you're to go with them. Don't ask any questions, just go. And Peter went down and he said, I'm the one you're seeking. And they told him that an angel had appeared to this Roman centurion, Cornelius, and that he had been asked to send for Peter and he would tell words to them. And so now Peter goes with them down to Caesarea and he begins to speak to Cornelius and his household. And Peter is going to explain to us now, out during the, this time he went through his mind, he figured out what this vision meant. Now it's an interesting thing today. There's some people that read this and don't read on to the end of the chapter and they say, well, this vision means that you can eat anything you please. You don't need to worry about the food laws that God gave in Leviticus 11. Now, Peter didn't feel that way. There's no record in anywhere in the New Testament of any of the apostles eating any unclean food. The Jews, never, the Jews had argument with the apostles about the Messiah, whether Jesus was the Messiah, but the Jews never had any argument with the Christians about clean and unclean foods but the, because the Christians didn't eat unclean foods either. But Peter is going to explain what this vision meant. What was God trying to tell him when he let down this sheet with all the unclean animals on it and said, rise, kill, and eat? Was he trying to teach Peter that it was all right now to eat pigs, swine, uh, shrimp, uh, all kinds of unclean foods that were specified in Leviticus 11 that Christians, that God's people were not to eat? Well, Peter's going to explain now what this vision meant. We read, in Acts 10, starting in verse 27. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful, in other words, it's not permitted, for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But 
God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. The Jews referred to the Gentiles as unclean. Sometimes they referred to them as unclean dogs. But Peter said, God showed me something. I am not anymore. Now, he had been a Jew. That's the way he had been raised. That's the way he had been trained. That's the way he had always thought. Ever since babyhood, he was a Jew. The Gentiles were unclean. In fact, many Jews believed that the Gentiles couldn't be saved. That's one of the reasons the Jews had so many arguments with Jesus, because Jesus told them, the people that you think aren't going to be saved are going to be saved before you. And so Peter says, the Lord told me something. He taught me something. What was, he, what was Peter talking about? He was talking about that vision he had of all the unclean animals. What was, that, what was the Lord trying to teach him? He says what the Lord was trying to teach him. He says, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Oh, friend, have you learned that lesson? Have you learned that if you're a Christian, you cannot look upon any human being as unclean or common? Oh, you say they're steeped in sin. They may be steeped in sin, but if they receive the gospel, they could be saved from the guilt of their sins and they could be saved from the power of their sinful habits. And so Peter now, he understands he's not to call any man common or unclean. Every human being can receive the gospel. No one is excluded. Jesus made that very clear. And it's made clear over and over again in the book of Revelation. It says, whosoever, and that means anybody, anybody that wants to. Sometimes people come to me and they want to know, because they've done such horrible things, can they be saved? Well, Jesus said, in John 6, 37, truly I say to you, or most assuredly I say to you, he who comes to me, I will in no case cast out. If you come to the Savior, you will, and you yield your life to him, you commit your life to him, you will be saved from the guilt of your sins and you will be saved from the power of your sins. And that could happen right today. And it happened right that day then to these people. Notice what happened. It says, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That's Peter speaking. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked then, for what reason have you sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius... Your prayer has been heard, and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon a tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. And so... Peter then says this. Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. God does not respect a person of one race more than a person of another race. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. If you fear him, you work righteousness you are accepted with him. That's what it says, Acts 10, 35. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us, who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. 
And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission, that's forgiveness, of sins. Now the scripture says in verse 44 that while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with languages and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So now there are Gentiles that are baptized Christians. And now these Gentiles that are baptized Christians and the Jews, it says there, the circumcision, now they're dealing with Gentiles who are baptized Christians who have never been circumcised. Should these people be allowed should they've received the Holy Spirit, so they've been baptized. Should they be allowed to be a part of the church without keeping all the law of Moses, keeping all the Jewish rites and ceremonies, including circumcision? Well, that became a huge question in the Christian church. Stay tuned and we'll look at it.